I'm not gonna lie, one of the places that I struggle most of all when it comes to trying to bring a little bit of life and extra understanding to my homeschool and not just check off the boxes is mathematics. And that is why I am so happy to have a wonderful resource to share with you today. It is called the Beast Academy Playground and I am interviewing the developer of the playground, Mark Hendrickson on this episode of the podcast. Hi, I'm Pam Barnhill, and I have helped thousands of homeschoolers create doable systems, beat burnout, and bring more joy to their homeschool days. Okay, with no further ado, let's jump right into that interview with Mark from Beast Academy. Mark Hendrickson is a senior math curriculum developer at The Art of Problem Solving, and he is the product developer of a newly released Beast Academy Playground, which is a free and growing collection of tabletop math games and activities for kids ages four plus. Now, these are designed to help introduce young minds to really big math. Mark, Mm -hmm. welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Great. Thanks so much for having me. Well, we are super excited to have you on here today to talk about math because math is not one of my favorite subjects. (laughs) You're not alone. (laughs) Yeah. Anytime I can help provide resources for homeschooling parents to be able to kind of get a better understanding of math and make the transition to where, you know, one of the things I never wanted to do with my kids was I never wanted them to feel um, like math, like to my feelings to kind of rub off on them. You know, I wanted them to be able to have their own feelings about math independent of me. And so anytime we can provide tools like that for parents, um, that's great. But why do you think parents are intimidated by math? Well, I mean, a lot of parents feel like you do my wife included. (laughs) Um, and you know, I mean, when we think of what what it means to do math, I think we maybe have the wrong idea. We think that that means answering a bunch of questions that have right answers and wrong answers, and then checking to see whether we got the right ones. Um, and that's a pretty intimidating proposition, um, aside from the fact that it also doesn't usually sound very fun. So, I mean, I think one of the one of the best things we can do is just kind of, um, especially for parents who feel like you do, um, just sort of broaden our understanding of what it means to do something mathematically. So maybe it's not necessarily always practicing those math facts and making sure you can get them right, which is important. Maybe it's playing a game and while you're doing it, asking questions that you genuinely have, and maybe you don't know the answer <laughs> answer to them, but um, you know, play games, have fun, be open to math in the same way that you are open to reading a new book with your kid. And you don't really know where that book is going to take you, what conversations it's going to lead to. Um, But books are a low risk proposition because they're fun and you do them together. Math can be that way too. I love that. I love that. And I love that you said, ask questions that you genuinely Mm -hmm. have that Mm -hmm. you don't necessarily know the answer to. And I think because we do have it in our heads as parents that you math has a right and a wrong answer, and we Mm -hmm. should know the right and the wrong answer and how to get there. (laughs) you know, how to get there, that that, that it puts all this pressure on us, but you're talking about math as more of an exploration instead. Exactly right. Yeah. Math is an approach or can be. And so, you know, um, when you, when you confront a problem or when you have a question and you ask that question out loud in front of your child, you're showing them what it's like to be curious and you're showing them that it's not just okay, it's good to wonder about things, even if you don't know if you'll be able to find out that answer or not. You know, there are unanswered questions in math that mathematicians, quote unquote, study. We don't know when they'll be answered or if they will, but that's that's real math. And it's okay to show that even to young kids. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Okay. So we've just taken a lot of pressure off of homeschool <laughs> parents everywhere. And there's this big collective sigh, but Mark, if math is like not about what's right or wrong or learning how to do these practices, then what do we do for math with our kids? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and it is important to be able to do five plus seven. I mean, at some point you want your child to be able to do that or whatever it may be for whatever grade they're in. 
But I think the answer to that question, you know, how can we make math a connecting and, um, you know, positive time like we do reading together? Um, the answer is play games, make crafts. Um, at beastacademy.com slash playground, we have a collection of games um, and crafts and other things we don't know what to call <laughs> magic tricks and things that anyone can make with what they have at home and or or play or do with what they have at home. And when you're doing these games, when you're playing these games, maybe on the side, you'll also be practicing some basic addition or subtraction or skip counting or whatever it may be. Maybe not. Some of them are just purely strategic, but there's room for all of that in your math time at home. There is room for just playing together. Um, you know, one of the benefits of games is when you play a game, you kind of want to win or you want to at least figure out how you can. And so your kid can stop worrying so much about whether they're adding right and start thinking about, okay, I know I got to add to, <laughs> to do my next move, but what I really want to do is I want to beat daddy or I want to beat mommy. How can I do that? And, you know, they're practicing addition, that's math, but thinking, how can I do that? Trying different things to do it. That's also math. And that's a, that's a problem solving mindset that we want our kids to have you know, whether they're quote unquote math people or not. Oh, I love that. Okay. And I'm so glad you brought that up because when you first started talking, you said, you know, uh, make time in your math and I'm sitting here mm -hmm. going, okay, there's this, these parents out there who are collectively kind of recoiling thinking, <laughs> you know, now I have to put something else on top of this math mm -hmm. workbook that I'm doing. But then you also said, you know, those kinds of thinking are also math. So what do we do about the parent who struggles with, I just need to finish the book and mm -hmm. seeing the value and doing the other thing instead? I, know, yeah. I mean, I know in addition to, but sometimes <laughs> if you don't have enough time, you may have to do it instead. Yeah. So, you can't keep adding things to your curriculum. <laughs> you know, you won't finish. Um, I was a teacher for many years. I know the pressure of finishing a curriculum. My wife homeschools our kids. We know that pressure. Um, so it's, it is a real pressure and it's difficult. I would say, you know, give yourself permission to, um, to sort of bask in what you learn. You know, when you learn a new reading skill, you don't then move to the next most difficult book and never return to those other books that maybe you loved. You let yourself enjoy that you can read those and you do it over and over again. You wonder about them. You ask questions. You know, when you learn a new addition skill, that doesn't need to be the end of the story. It's really valuable curriculum wise and learning wise. And in terms of making lifelong learners who love math, it's really valuable to take some time to just spend some time maybe playing games that you couldn't play before because you didn't have the addition skills. Well, now you do. So before you rush on to the next thing, let part of your math time be playing and be playful. Um, Cause then you really get the reward and maybe that next thing feels motivated because what am I going to be able to do next? Right. I love that. I love that so much that it's like, we don't, we don't just rush on to the next skill. And I mm -hmm. think we think of math as being kind of this linear thing and we master right. one thing, check off the box and move to the next thing. And, and so I think it really gets kind of the short end of the stick a lot of times, because we're just thinking of, of a list of skills that need to be mastered instead of kind of this practice that we can do every day or this uh, mm -hmm. wonderful thing that we could explore. So I love that you address that. You know, I've read somewhere that, um, and I can't remember the source right now, but I've read somewhere that like the amount of time it really, really takes to master elementary mathematics is way less than the amount of time that you spend on elementary mathematics in school. So is it possible that by leaning into some of this play and, and taking time to explore some of these skills that we're really not cheating ourselves of time to do math, um, because really we don't need as much time as we might've thought with all the busy work to begin with? Yeah. I mean, that's, I'm not an expert. I know that every kid is different. I know my kids are different from each other and from other kids. Um, I would say that it's important to play math, not just do math, um, be, both because um, maybe like you're saying, we really don't need to be spending as much time on, I don't know, whatever it is that's in your mind that's scaring you about math, <laughs> those worksheets or whatever. But I also think we recognize in other disciplines how important it is to really at least have a chance to love that discipline. 
you know, and, and we know that that love isn't wasted time. That's not just um, the sugar on top. That's important because loving something really motivates you to feel free to ask questions about it and to want to know more. And we have to make room for that in math. It is not wasted time, especially for young kids. They've got a lot of math in front of them. And we really want to open the door for them to ask questions in a way that like we can echo, we can ask those same questions. We don't know the answer either, but we want to show that early on and often when we're playing in a really safe environment, like, Hey, we're playing a game. This isn't um, something you have to get right because we can play the game again tomorrow. Um, so, you know, um, I think that that can be really important to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit about these resources on the playground. If I'm a mom who's mm-hmm. like, okay, let's bring some of this into our homeschool a little bit and play with this math and kind of try it on for size and make it all stretchy around here. What resources do you have for me? So you, you could go to beastacademy.com slash playground. And we have our collection of games and crafts and things there. You know, one thing that I encourage you to do is Um, We have some filters set up so you could select like a specific skill that you want to work on or an age range, or maybe you could type in, you know, in our case, a four-year-old and a seven-year-old and see what comes up that could be fun for both because we do have things like that. Oh, fun. Um, And yeah, I mean, um, we're adding new games all the time. One game we have, um, just as an example, is called Trash Get Ball. Set up some trash cans, throw some paper in there, keep score. Um, And the math really comes into you know, how are you going to keep score? If your kid's working on skip counting by sevens, each one's worth seven points. Um, Or if your kid's working on even and odd, you can write some even numbers on some paper, then crumple them up, odd numbers on the other, crumple them up. And then when you're done, count up all the ones that made it and see, you know, if the even player had more or the odd player had more. And, you know, for each of the games that we have on beastacademy.com slash playground, um, you know, we have a lot of variations listed, variations to make it a little harder, a little easier um, based on what you have or don't have in the house. And we also have notes written. Um, hey, here's the math behind this game. So if you want to get into it a little more, if your kid is asking some questions and maybe you don't know the answer, here's a good place for you to start. I love it. I love providing, you know, two things, something really fun for the kids to do. Mm -hmm. And then that help for the mom or dad to take some of that intimidation out of it. This is the math behind it. We're going to give you the answer so you can kind of (laughs) pass it along to them. So I love it. I think it's a wonderful thing you're doing. So everybody go check out beastacademy.com slash playground. Mark, thank you so much for joining me here today and giving us some stuff to think about when it comes to math. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here. And there you have it. Now, a big thank you to Mark Hendrickson from Beast Academy for coming on today to chat with us. And if you would like a link to the Beast Academy Playground, we've got that on the blog post that accompanies this episode of the podcast. You can find that at pambarnhill.com slash TMBH09. Now, I will be back again next week to talk all about homeschooling middle school. And I cannot wait to see you here. Until then, keep on homeschooling.